One of the great things about the Xbox Series S and Xbox Series X is that you can sideload applications on it using a dev mode account. In this video, I'm going to show you how to load RetroArch using your dev mode account onto your Xbox Series S and Xbox Series X. And it all starts right now. Hi, Blaine Locklear here. To level up your video game hardware and software through restorations, repairs, mods, product reviews, and other video game content, do that by subscribing. All right, grab your Xbox controller and fire up your PC. We've got some work to do to get you set up and running on RetroArch. Okay, if you never dipped your toe into the waters of getting a developer account, don't worry. As Ryan would say from Screen Rants, Actually, it's going to be super easy. Barely an inconvenience. I've got the instructions for how to get this done through Microsoft linked for you in the description below. And a developer account is good for the Xbox One S, Xbox One X, Xbox Series S, Xbox Series X, Windows, and Windows Phone devices. After you've secured your developer account access with Microsoft, you'll need to add dev mode to your Xbox console. You can access the search function on your controller by pressing the Y button. From here, just use the on-screen keyboard to type in dev mode. Then use the D-pad to come up to where it says Xbox dev mode and select it with the A button. This opens up the Microsoft Store on your console and takes you directly to the dev mode download page. Select get with the A button to download it to your console. Once the download is complete, you can go back to the home screen and launch dev mode by selecting it with the D-pad and opening it with the A button. The dev mode software will give you a welcome screen and tell you to review the upcoming information, and this is very important. Select next with the A button, and it gives you this before you begin message, and this is very important. Let me zoom in for just a moment so you can see. You need to make sure each of these are included in your processes. First, make sure that your development PC is running the latest version of Windows 10. You need to install Visual Studio on your Windows 10 PC, and I have the link for it for you in the description below, and it's a free download from Microsoft directly from their site. And also make sure that your console has at least five gigabytes of available storage. Press the A button on the next box to continue, and you'll get a code that you're going to need to put into your Microsoft developer account in order to register your Xbox console with your account. Your code is going to be different than the one that you see here. Also, make note of this web address. Although the registration code is different for each console, the address is exactly the same for everybody. It's aka.ms slash activate Xbox. Also, take note that this registration code is only good for a short time, so make sure that you document it down and promptly go to the website and register your Xbox. Otherwise, you have to repeat this process to get a new code. When you type in the aka.ms slash activate Xbox web address, it takes you directly to your Microsoft partner account and directly to the page where you can add your activation code for your Xbox Series S or Series X. Click the plus button on the right and then select enter activation code. You do remember the activation code your console gave you, right? Good. Type it in right here. And when you're done, come down to submit and click on it. It'll add your console to the list of approved devices in your developer account. Then back on your Xbox console, you'll be asked if you want to switch to developer mode. Obviously you do. Select switch and restart by pressing the A button. When your Xbox restarts, you'll see the typical splash screen logo, but this time, instead of going to the home menu, you'll be in developer mode. If this is your first time seeing an Xbox console in developer mode, don't worry, I'm going to walk you through the steps right now to get you up and running. You'll need to add your developer account into the developer app. Come over to Add Existing and select it with the A button. Use the game controller and the on-screen virtual keyboard to add your email address and password, and then select Add with the A button. After a moment of deep contemplation, it will add your account right here. Use the D-pad on the controller to come down to Remote Access Settings and select it with the A button. Small text again here, let's zoom in. Make sure that Enable Xbox Device Portal is checked here, it should be by default. And optionally you can require authentication, but also make note that only consoles that are on your immediate network will be accessible. So if it was your evil diabolical plan to employ a super secret government agency to hack into my Xbox Series S and find out exactly what games I'm playing on my console, yeah, it's not gonna work. All right, once you're done with all of this, just come down to close and select it with the A button, or you can just press the B button to go back. 
Then look in the bottom right corner and find this web address. You're going to need this information to type in in just a moment into a web browser in order to connect to your Xbox Series S or X through your dev account. Obviously, to play RetroArch, you're going to need to download RetroArch. This is the RetroArch.com download page. On this page, scroll down until you get to the section that has the Xbox logo and has Xbox Series and Xbox One. There are two different downloads you need to grab from here. The first one is Visual C++. This is actually different from Visual Studio. And the other is the bundle download for RetroArch itself. Open a new tab in your browser and go to the web address and port number that you got from your Xbox. You can scroll down and click on Advanced, and then click on the message that says Proceed to, and then your web address to your Xbox. Or if you entered credentials for your Xbox, you'll need to enter them here to proceed. Okay, this stuff tends to get a little smallish again, but hang in there. All you need to do is move the mouse pointer up to the green box in the white window that says Add then click on the add button right there. To add your content to your Xbox console, in the box that pops up, come up to the option for choose file and click on it. Then select the bundle file for RetroArch that you downloaded from their website. Next, move your mouse pointer down to next and click next. You'll be asked if you want to include any necessary dependencies for your RetroArch bundle, and you do. You want to include Visual C++ that you downloaded. Choose File and then select Visual C++. Once you have both the RetroArch bundle and the necessary dependency selected, come down to Start and click on it. This is going to take several minutes to install. Once the installation is complete, click on Done to continue. As I did research for this video, I found a lot of other videos covering the same subject showed nothing about how to actually load the games up. I'm going to show you that because we're going to cover everything you need to know to get it up and running. Grab the games that you want to copy over, in this case I'm just grabbing one, Super Mario Bros. for NES. Insert a USB drive formatted in XFAT or FAT32, and then paste your ROMs on the root. You can also, if you have multiple game systems, you can create folders and put the ROMs in those folders, and then get to them as subfolders inside RetroArch. Once you've copied over the ROMs either to the root or put them in folders, you can just safely eject the USB stick. We'll put it in the Xbox when the time comes. But for now, let's transition back over to your console because we've got more work to do. Back at the Xbox Dev Mode application, you'll now see that RetroArch is listed in your list of choices. Use the D-pad to scroll over to RetroArch and then press the A button for a list of additional choices. Scroll down to the one on the bottom that says View Details, then select that with the A button. We're getting into small text again, so let's zoom in. What you see here is that your Xbox is assigned RetroArch as an app rather than a game. This is detrimental because it will not take full advantage of the GPU power. Press the A button and use the D-pad to navigate to Game and select that with the A button. This lets your Xbox console take full advantage of all the horses under the hood. Once you have it set to game, you can press the B button to go back. Now use the D-pad to scroll up to where it says Restart Console and select that with the A button. You want to go about it this way because it restarts the console but continues to keep it in dev mode. Press the A button to confirm the restart which will open up dev mode and convert RetroArch from app to game. When dev mode comes back up, you're going to need to sign back in with your Xbox account. You can press the Home button on the controller to do this. Use the D-pad to scroll down to the account you want to sign in with and select it with A. Once you're signed in with your Xbox account, you can launch RetroArch one of two ways. You can just scroll down to it with the D-pad and press A, or you can go to Launch Home if you want to establish it through the more traditional home screen. You won't see a shortcut for it yet because you haven't launched it for the first time, but if you use the D-pad to come down to where it says My Games and Apps, you'll find it there waiting for you. Use the D-pad and then select My Games and Apps with the A button. And there's RetroArch waiting for you. Use the D-pad to move the cursor over to RetroArch and then select it with the A button to launch it for the first time. RetroArch has to go through this process in order to set up essential files and folders. What you're going to get is kind of like the XMB style interface, but not exactly. And I'm going to show you some ways in order to set this up properly so that you can enjoy RetroArch to its full capacity. The first thing you want to do is go down on the D-pad until you get to Online Updater and then select it with the A button. From here, I would recommend that you run every online updater except for cheats as an optional one. 
If you're planning to use cheats for any of the ROMs you have, go ahead and run it, but it takes about 45 minutes to complete, where the others generally take from seconds to no more than a couple of minutes. The one you really want to focus on here is updating assets, because it's going to make it possible for you to use enhanced resolution on the menus and also have access to some other key features. Go ahead and run all the other updaters except for cheats unless you specifically want that one because of the length of time it takes to use it. I'm going to skip down to the bottom because I want to show you something specific here. Alright, you see this option for on-demand thumbnails? If you turn this on, it will download thumbnail images for the games as you scroll through them if you don't have them already. But here's the problem. You can't turn it on. It's supposed to have a slider for yes or no, and it's absent. Let me show you where to go to fix this. First, press the B button to go back to the online updater area, and then press the B button again to go back to the RetroArch main menu. You don't see them yet, but there are actually choices along the cross media bar at the top. Use the D-pad to scroll to the right, and then select drivers with the A button. From here, you'll need to scroll down with the D-pad until you get to video, and then select video with the A button. You'll find the default video driver is for Direct 3D 11. Press the A button and change that to GL. This is going to make it possible for you to see the remainder of the cross media bar and menu choices. There are only a couple of emulators that require Direct 3D, and you can configure them on a case-by-case -case basis. Now that you've gone to the trouble to make these configuration changes, you definitely want to save them. Press the B button to go back, and then press left on the D-pad to go back to the main menu. From here, scroll all the way down until you get to Configuration File, then select it with the A button. From here, scroll down until you see Save Current Configuration and select that with the A button. You'll see a message at the bottom confirming that your configuration has been saved. You'll need to quit and re-enter RetroArch at this point. Press the B button to go back, scroll down to Quit RetroArch, and select it with the A button. Back at the Dev Mode menu, go back over to Launch Home and select it with the A button to go back to the Home menu. From there, you'll see RetroArch is actually now part of your shortcuts. This time, you can relaunch RetroArch just by scrolling over with the D-pad to the shortcut and select it with the A button to launch it. And this time when it comes up, things are going to look like they should. Now you have the proper icon sets across the cross media bar. Okay, so this time if you go back down to Online Updater and select it with the A button, and then inside Online Updater, scroll all the way down to the bottom where you had the opportunity to download missing thumbnail art, this time you'll actually see the toggle for turning this on and off. So if you want to use this feature, you can turn it on right there. See, there it is. Now you can press the B button to go back to the main menu. Okay, this next step is optional, but highly recommended because there's no way to exit out of games without having to go all the way back to the Retro Arch boot without doing this step. Use the D-pad to scroll over to Settings, scroll down to Input, and select it with the A button. Use the D-pad to scroll down through the list of choices until you get to the one that says Menu, Toggle, Gamepad, Combo, and select it with the A button. This lets you pull up the RetroArch menu and optionally even quit out of the games without having to close RetroArch completely. I chose press start and select because it just made the most sense for me, but you can choose any of these things that best suits your needs. Select the one you want with the A button and then press B to go back. All right, let's slow the roll just a minute here to explain why you might want to consider doing this. If you are going to use emulation like PlayStation 2 or other systems that might require a disk swap, if you don't turn these two options off, it will impede the ability to swap disks. Use the D-pad to navigate to the settings menu, and then use the D-pad to scroll down until you get to the option for user interface, then select it with the A button. It's pausing that causes the problem. Use the D-pad to scroll down to the first one which says, Pause content when menu is active and turn this off. But again, you only have to do this if you're going to use an emulator that requires disk swapping. Then use the D-pad to scroll down to pause content while not active. And if you're going to use an emulator that swaps disks, turn this off as well with the A button. Then you can press the B button to go back. Anytime you make configuration changes, you want to go back to the main menu, scroll down until you get to configuration file, select that with the A button, Scroll down to Save Current Configuration, and press the A button to save your configuration. And again, you'll get a confirmation message at the bottom of the screen that your configuration has been properly saved. All right, you've stuck it out this far. You ready to jam and play some retro games? Here's what you need to do. 
Take the USB stick with your retro game ROMs on it and insert it into your Xbox. From the XMB, scroll all the way over to the right until you see the plus button in the top icons, and then select Scan Directory with the A button. In this case, the USB drive is represented as Drive E. Select it with A, scroll down, and select Scan This Directory. This can take a while depending upon the speed of your USB drive and the size of the games you have and the quantity of games, but in this case it's only one, so it's instantaneous. And here it's represented with an NES controller on the cross media bar and the game is shown directly below it. Use the D-pad to scroll down to select the game you want and select it with the A button to launch it. Then select Run with the A button, select the core you want with the A button, and then select Run again with the A button. And just like that, it's Mario time. And don't forget, you can press start and select or whichever button combination you pressed to exit out of the game through the menu and go back and pick the next game you want to play. But don't just stop there. Check out this video shown on screen in the desktop browsing experience and linked in the description and pinned comment below. I always enjoy our time together on YouTube and I can't wait to see you in the next video.